Well, good morning. My name is Wayne Stephen Jennings, and I'm the Managing Director of the Event Organizers Network. And I've been asked today to give my insight and viewpoint on what I think the future of the events industry is going to be. Now, of course, this is really crystal ball gazing, very difficult thing to do, but I'm gonna give it my best shot. But I'd like to just qualify what I'm about to say um, in that it's, it's a personal opinion and it really is informed by the business that I'm in. The Event Organizers Network is very much as the title states. Um, we've been in business for decades and focus predominantly on business events. And so we have a tremendous amount of experience around not only in-person events, but certainly of late in the last couple of, well, in the last year, certainly, um, of how to put together virtual events that actually make sense to corporations. I mean, the bottom line is that irrespective of lockdown and COVID and whatever um, the current sort of paradigm is, companies, government departments, education establishments still need to be talking to their suppliers. They still need to be talking to clients and staff. Messages still need to be communicated. Sales still need to be done. In short, business still needs to be done. And so eventing in any sense of the word in this respect must continue. But of course, facing lockdown of in-person events in which we're sitting in a situation now where, for example, an adjusted level three, where you can't really do more than 50 people in a venue, certainly makes it extremely difficult for the traditional in-person event to take place. And so I think that's where the, the virtual platform starts really making quite a bit of sense. So, in short, what qualifies me to make a contribution to this discussion is that we've done a number of virtual events across the spectrum, across different industries and for different clients, and for completely different reasons. We've been able to determine what works well, what doesn't really work, and what's also been quite interesting is to see how, in a very, very short space of time, the virtual ability to generate content, to present content, has changed and modified very, very quickly to adapt to the needs of, of what business is looking for. So I think probably what we should have a, a quick look at is what's the current state of the industry. And I can summar, summarize it in one word, decimated, in terms of in-person events. Um, it is extremely difficult from a business point of view, as is, is quite obvious, for venues in particular and, and service providers who have focused over the last number of decades on in-person events and who are set up and structured to deal products and services into that market, to be able to deal with the uncertainty of when lockdowns may be implemented, when they may be lifted. Uh, I mean, as we all know, the industry went from a level one lockdown where, you, I mean, in-person events started becoming feasible. It's very difficult to economically justify an event of 50 people or less, but at 200 people indoor, which is where we were around about level one, this becomes a little more feasible to do. And so, of course, so it started companies started looking at this. However, without very much warning, we went straight back to level three, and really that just pulled the rug out from underneath the, the events industry, the, the in-person events industry. And I think probably at this stage, the message started to sink in that in terms of being able to continue doing business um, on events platforms or doing any kind of event business in, in talking to clients and suppliers, as I mentioned earlier, that more and more reliance needed to be placed on the virtual offerings out there. And so, of course, like anything, there's a period of time it takes for people to understand the, the industry, to understand the technology, to become used to it, um, and also to start investigating and interrogating what kind of benefit and return on investment can you get? In fact, is it possible to even get a return on investment, whether that be a financial return or return on knowledge, return on customer loyalty or sales, whichever, whatever your objective happens to be. And so I think, as you'd expect with any industry, specialists start making themselves heard, they rise to the top and start presenting a product that really starts making sense for business. So I think, let's have a look going forward as to what I think the future of events will look like. So, in a nutshell, the future of events will simply be a large component of virtual hosted events. 
And as lockdown restrictions are lifted um, to lesser or greater degree, very much depending on what happens with vaccines, what happens with viral mutations, there are a number of uncertainties that even the best virologists in the world are not able to predict. So in-person events still, I think, although people want to network and interact with one another, it's going to become very, very difficult to predict what the state is going to be. So I think we'll find that hybrid events will become status quo. You'll see a lot more of those kinds of events that combine and marry an in-person event component with a virtual event going forward. Hybrid events will create a fantastic opportunity for companies, organizations, government departments to blend the in-person interactive networking aspect of face-to-face -face meetings um, and events with virtual a virtual component. And what is really advantageous, a number of advantages to this, but one of the most important is that um, in-person events tend to be quite limiting in terms of location and cost. There are a number of factors that really do make, can make them quite expensive. And for example, if you're holding an event in Gauteng, for example, and you have branch offices around the country, it's quite difficult to include those individuals without having to fly them up to the event or bring them in, pay for accommodation and have them available for a two or three day period. Whereas those individuals in, in your outlying offices can certainly join the event on a virtual basis and really experience almost every aspect of the live event, of the in-person event that you're able to host. Because anything you do on stage, for example, whether it be awards, whether it be entertainment or comedian um, music, it doesn't really matter. It, that can be replicated and mirrored in the virtual platform. Virtual platforms also cater quite extensively and extremely deeply for the exhibition component of any particular events. And it, it's actually developed to the point where the interaction between a, a delegate or attendee and or a buyer and an exhibitor is technologically very slick and it makes it very feasible for people to conduct business in a very structured way. And it allows people to attend an event and, and browse through and chat to the kinds of products and services that make sense for them. And so really, even in a hybrid environment, exhibitions can be done. I mean, there are very few events that I can think of off the top of my head that, for example, the virtual environment would not cater for. One of them that immediately springs to mind would be the year-end Christmas party. I certainly want, wouldn't want to be doing a Christmas party virtually. So perhaps, you know, in that sense, a virtual event is not the greatest option. But in the absence of anything else, there are, in fact, interesting ways of using the virtual platform to create and engage uh, individuals around entertainment and interactivity. But let's look at what I consider to be the primary driving force for why virtual events will not only just become a novelty as they almost are now, but within a very, very short space of time become an almost industry de facto standard. And that is really driven by the market that the virtual event platform or methodology appeals to. We need to bear in mind that at this stage of the game, people who are likely to embrace this technology are what are commonly referred to as millennials or Generation Y. Now, there are two types, or well, the two segments of Generation Y, it's Y1 and Y2. Um, and these are, both of those are grouped together as millennials. And as I'm sure we've all heard some discussion around millennials is how they treat life, how they approach life, how they view the way things have been done in the past. And of course, one of the aspects of millennials is that they were almost born with technology in their hands. And so technology and doing things online is, it's just simply natural and normal for them. This is the generation that engages socially more so on digital media than they do in person. They are happy to make purchases online. They have less concern about doing that. And so when you present virtual options around events, this is something that market will embrace. Now, let's bear this in mind. That market is typically now generation why one is 25 to 29 years of age, and why two is 29 to 39. And that's the market right now that is really driving. They have all risen to positions in the corporate and government levels. They've brought with them a completely different view of how events, traditional events, should be redone. And so they're very comfortable in 
consuming content via a virtual online platform. And that's a very, very important factor that I believe will drive the entrenchment of virtual events going forward. And of course, with that, they will bring expertise, they will bring creativity, they will bring um, methods of engagement. Obviously, technology will continue to grow and enable better and more amazing opportunities online. And so I think, you know, for those of us who may have thought in the beginning of lockdown that, oh, virtual is just a, an interim solution, I think we're going to find that even in-person events themselves would start changing and be presented and packaged differently to almost complement what's being done on the virtual side. So let's look at a, a, some of the advantages and challenges that virtual events pose. Um, so some of the advantages I think include things like with a virtual event, you can certainly have a broader reach. Um, as I mentioned slightly earlier in this conversation, you can attract markets that are not designated by geography, by provincial boundaries. So you can, in any one virtual event, attract attendees across not only provinces within a country, but also international boundaries. Again, also, when it comes down to finances, virtual events tend to be a lot shorter, a lot more focused in terms of time, Traditional events would, would, could be a day to two to three days or sometimes more. Um, as a result of the shorter duration of virtual events, you also have a much higher focus on what's being done in the virtual event. And so in terms of planning, there's a, in my opinion anyway, a tremendous amount of opportunity to get return on investment, whether that investment be a, a concept or an education or funding or, or better buyer loyalty or better brand recognition. Another great advantage of an online platform or virtual platform is the integration of analytics or metrics to measure the kind of impact your particular event is having. Now, for example, even at the moment, Zoom offers a the Zoom platform offers a tremendous amount of data gathering or information ability for you to have a look at and see what kind of impact, what kind of engagement, what kind of content were attendees engaging with? And this gives you a very quick ability to make decisions around how to pitch your future messages, your future events, what works and what doesn't work. This is now all available. This is, it was a lot more difficult to do in the in-person event environment. I mean, you would need to rely on surveys, for example, that were either done on site or after the fact with an in-person event, which made things and as we all know, probably 30 to 40 percent of people in an in-person event would actually complete the survey afterwards, even if there was a prize attached to it or some other incentive. Whereas with a virtual platform, this is all integrated and it's measuring information and data behind the scenes. And so from a marketing point of view, from somebody who's running events on a regular basis, um, it starts giving you the kind of data and information using the company would need or should need and should be using to fashion how you present your events your content going forward. And of course, there's a wealth of information out there already, a little bit of internet research on the topic of what works in virtual events, the, the, the sort of how to's, the best of's. There's a tremendous amount of data. It's not always South African based data, of course, but still great insightful data uh, from international trends as to how people are interacting and engaging with the content that's being served. Now, you may think that the virtual environment doesn't cater for the traditional kinds of sponsorships that you would have in an in-person event, um, you know, whether they be media partners, sponsors, advertising, all of these things can be done. In fact, a virtual event doesn't need to be a very bland sort of 10 people sitting behind a computer screen chatting. You can bring in production value. And we've done a number of these for our clients where we have background music. We're able to put sponsor messages in at certain parts of the program. We're able to create advertising opportunities um, through the online exhibition platform, of course, there are a number of ways that you can drive a message or a product or a brand through to the attendee in a very engaging, very attractive way. So when you think of a virtual event, think of it in the same way as you would think of the production values that you would have at a live in-person event. It can be made to look extremely slick, very smooth, timings can be built in, you can mix a combination of live content and recorded content. Um, you can control 
attendee engagement, and that's something that a virtual event is absolutely brilliant at, is that at any stage of the proceedings, you can engage your attendees and get them to become a part of the event in a more meaningful way. In fact, almost perhaps contributing to the content of the day. So let's have a look at some of the challenges for virtual events. Um, let's bear in mind that at the end of the day, whether we're talking about individuals attending an in-person event or a virtual event, you are still dealing with human beings and they are motivated typically by the same things. The platform on which that information or that uh, kind of content or motivation or incentive is presented upon is almost irrelevant. You still need to engage your attendees or your delegates. And let's be honest, we've all been in a Zoom meeting or perhaps on the odd Zoom webinar. It's very, very easy to be have your attention taken elsewhere. The dog runs in, the children need attention. You get thirsty, so you dash off for a cup of coffee. So the challenge for the person creating the event and presenting the content is to keep the attendance, the attendees and the delegates engaged. So one of the ways you can do this is to make sure that the event, the virtual event is short. To have long rambling four hour virtual events does not work. People lose interest, they will move on. They're there to be either entertained or to be given knowledge that is useful, that has proper take home value so that they feel at the end of a session, at the end of a webinar or event, they have really got some value out of this. The long rambling uh, in-person event situation that often uh, people remember only by the great session they had at the pub afterwards or maybe in the networking lounge where over a couple of glasses of wine, real business was, was done, but they had to sit through a four hour presentation in the afternoon to get there. That doesn't work in the virtual space. What works is short, concise, properly moderated content, exciting engagement to keep people engaged and to keep them aware that they are deriving value and benefit out of being part of a virtual event. So some ideas as to how to keep your delegates and your attendees engaged. Um, this is from, not only from our own experience, but just from information that's evolving as this platform and as this method of running events um, evolves is you need to be creative. You need, first of all, content, as they say, is king. But it's not just about being king now. It needs to be packaged differently. It needs to be delivered in a way that is short and concise and interesting. Um, you need to be able to talk to your presenters, really have a look at what's being said, make sure it's on point in terms of the topicality of the event, make sure it's not just um, random information just to fill up space, to create, uh, fill up time slots. Make sure that what you're doing is delivering value because that's where your return on the investment is going to come from. Involve your attendees and delegates, and you can do this in a number of ways. Obviously, a simple way to do it is polls or surveys, and this can be built into the program and really linked to the kind of content that's being delivered. Don't be scared also to use entertainment. We've done a number of events where we've actually used comedians. We've blended a live live music sessions with recorded music session. Um, you, you do need to be careful as to what kind of entertainment you use. You must obviously not detract from the nature of the event or the content, the typical theme of the event that you're running. So bear that in mind, but don't be scared to use production values like that. There are a number of options around online quizzes that are fun and engaging, that are quite short and concise. You can use that to get information from your delegates. And this is what I meant earlier about making them part of your content is, you know, you can actually, you've actually got them engaged with you. Let them do something and activities, even if it's a, a little game type event. Um, there's a whole range of virtual type, team building type, entertainment type, uh, events and products and services out there that you can use and create almost bespoke uh, profiles for you to engage your delegates and keep them entertained and connected with you all the way through to the end of the day. So realizing I could talk about this topic for at least another 30 minutes, I think it is time to wrap this up. And so in conclusion, I again would like to say that in terms of my own personal view of how the events industry is going to look going forward, it's, it's really going to be quite heavily reliant on the virtual platform. In-person events certainly will not die away. We are creature, we are social creatures after all, even if we are not all of us millennials, or even if some of us 
or most of the buying public now are millennials. We still like to engage with people, but I think we will find that due to the risk factors of the COVID uh, pandemic and you know factors related to mutations and how the pandemic can develop, in-person events are going to be there, but I think they will be packaged differently. They'll be a little more expensive. Obviously, you would still require social distancing for quite some time coming forward if a vaccine is not invented that really makes the risk factor zero you're going to find that the whole way in-person events are done will change and certain events will simply fall off the in-person profile and move onto the virtual platform. Um, I think that there's a tremendous amount of scope for hybrid events where we marry the virtual aspect to the in-person events. And so quite honestly, I'm very excited. I've seen tremendous value being developed to, delivered to our clients on the virtual platform as they become more and more a fait with what can be done. Um, in many cases, I think we need to be patient with clients, with people who are, who are embracing the virtual platform for their corporate events, or because there is a paradigm shift that needs to take place. And in many cases, and this is from personal experience, I found that once the client has run a virtual event where we brought in some really interesting features, it's only then that the light switches on and they are able to see the power of the platform and the way that they can change the, the product message, the way they change, how they put their branding across, how they communicate and engage with their particular clients or suppliers or, or staff. It's, they, but they do need to have an experience of this. They need to do one so that they can see the tremendous potential that virtual events offers. I thank you for your time. Um, if you need to ever get hold of me for information or you'd like to talk more about your own virtual events, you can get hold of me at the Event Organizers Network on number 082-900-1598. Thank you for your time.